Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, we're, let's look at the uh, S&Ps. It's, it's been a wild kind of a last 30 days, but... Um, well, first off, I got to congratulate you, folks, uh, Tim, because... Folks, you got you to check this out, man. This is so cool. Tim, you know, when they say you can't buy lows and sell highs, well, guess what? <laughs> he just did it. <laughs> That's the bottom line. And this is, this is so cool, okay? So we know that the, the, the market bottomed with the high volume low on the 5th. Well, bottom line is that, guess what? If you're a subscriber, you put out there, they're buying. And guess what? Last night he sold. Just to give you an idea, I mean, what a trade, Tim, man. Congratulations, man. That, I, you know, I yeah, was waiting for you to come across with that other one. We can go over it, meaning that, okay, man, how far are we going to go here? That was quite yeah. a trade, man. Unreal. Really cool. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Once why you get lucky, so, uh, you know, that, that one worked out. Well, your and, ratios uh, work. That's the bottom line. I, I understand. We both, uh, you know, you, you get lucky and you, you're humble, but the bottom line is that, both of those worked, I mean, in an incredible way. And so really cool, man. Okay. Yeah. So now we know how the market goes. No one cares what you did yesterday, man. What are you going to do today? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Well, <laughs> yeah. Let's take, let's take a uh, look at chart one. Okay. I'm here. And, uh, and we, we looked at this once before. Yep. And I think back in July. Anyhow, the uh, nobody really pays attention to it, but it seems to work pretty well, and I pay attention to it. But the top window is the RSI. This is a daily chart of the SPY, and the, tar the top chart is, is the 14 period RSI for the SPY. And when it gets up around 80, or actually it gets 80, or a, actually has to be between 80 to 85, it gets up to 90. Then you're probably going in a blow up top. But okay. if it stays around 80, you know, 79.5 to 85.6, I don't know what okay. the exact number is, but yeah. you now 80 to 85 is an ideal zone for it to peak out. Once that happens, it's usually a confirmation of an uptrend, but at the same time, you usually stall, the market stalls. Uh, sometimes it stalls a short period of time before heading higher. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a, a longer stall. But I circled, uh, I didn't circle, but I put two squares the square, on the square. I can see it. There. Yep. And, uh, and I thought back in, in uh, this is, uh, yeah, 2020, looks like about, I don't know, August, September time frame, I, I squared that out and says, I possible, I thought that was a possible scenario, what the current market may look like. Okay. And, and so far, is is, is starting uh, to form exactly like that. We peaked out, uh, we went down, straight down, I thought, you know, I bet we, we bought them and go straight back up again. And uh, there's a reason why I thought that, and we, we kind of skip around here, but... That's okay. Uh, let's go to, Yes, it's, it's, it's switch is chart two. Okay. Got it. And the reason why I thought that we might, uh, this chart is the SPX tilt ratio. Yes. And so that's the, the bond market and the equity market. So, uh, I mean, that's the whole market. I mean, that's, yes. yeah, you combine those things, two things together, you know, that, that's a trillion dollar. Oh, yeah. Indicator. Big time. I don't know how big, you know, quite, trillions. Quite trillions. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, so anyhow, it's basically a big picture of the market, and it doesn't give you a lot of information unless you put an RSI to it. Okay. And so, and I put a ten period RSI. I screwed around with other RSIs, but ten seems to work. If you go back to history, it works the best. Okay. And once this RSI, a lot of times it just bombs around thirty and turns back up, and you get like worthwhile lows and all those red lines across the chart are times when the RSI of the SPX ratio uh, bottoms out. And even it can bottom out. If you remember back in December of last year, we were talking on on your show here, and, and everybody was kind of bearish on your... Uh, yes. Uh, ...on the deal. Well, this is one chart. There's some other charts, too, but this is one of the charts that suggests, no, nah, we're not at a top, we're at a bottom. Wow. And even though the market was, was going sideways there, uh, the RSI for this SPX tilt ratio is giving a bullish sign. 
And I forget, and the VIX was also saying things too at that time. But this is one indicator that kept me uh, long on the market. Nice. And so, uh, but anyhow, so anyhow, the RSI bombs around 30. But when it gets really uh, beat up, and uh, it touched actually 14 on August 5th. And uh, that's pretty much. Uh, I went back in history, and a few other times it hit that, and the other few times it hit it, about eighty of them, eighty percent of them, went straight down and straight back up. I see. That's the reason why, why yeah. I thought we may go straight down, straight back up, because this SPX tilt ratio got so beat up to the downside. Right. So, uh, and, so, and so far that was, you know, it's kind of a guess. But it, it turned out to be right because it's very seldom you get an RSI on this ratio that deep in that deep below thirty. Well, so no, we can does. see that we can see that on this chart right here. I can only see one other time that it went into that line. It approached the line one, two, three times, but four times, but yeah. not under it. Like yeah. you, you just put that big circle on it. Yeah, pretty cool, man. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. Two thousand twenty-three. You know, looks like it got down to I don't know. <laughs> maybe minus 20 there or something. So it went pretty much straight down, straight up. Yes. Uh, so the more it gets oversold, you know, the ratio between the equity market and bond market is way out of whack. And everything kind of goes back to, to normal. So it's, it's like a, you know, a rubber band stretched in one direction and it snaps back into the other direction. That's what is currently going on. These fear so, gauges are something else, aren't they? The, the what? The fear gauges. You know, that's like a fear yeah, gauge, uh, right? I mean, I, I, yeah, you, you know, I know you preach that, but it, it really is. It's pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When everybody's you know running, you know, and yeah. know, screaming, you know, with their heads cut off, you know, there's a huge opportunity to step in. Yeah, you can and, see it. Uh, you can see uh, it. You know, you might, yeah, you might have a day or two of of, of pain, or you know, right? You kind of, uh, you know, you're you're put it this way: if you if you walk into in uh, front of a, a, a fear situation, you don't have to fear very long because fear ha happens in a very short uh, spear of time. Yes, it, it doesn't does. Doesn't go on for months. It just goes on for you know hours or maybe a day or I two know. worse. Wow, what a, what a motivator! Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are yeah. coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials down sixty eight, Nasdaq up forty one, S and P's down seven and a half. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your corral and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 88, Nasdaq are 43, S&Ps are down 8.5. And, and, Tim, I have the second chart up here. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Let me... Um, okay, I'll kind of done with that. Anyhow, that's an indicator okay. that uh, you should watch. Just flip to chart three, kind of figure out where we are right now. Okay, I have it. All right, this is... This is we showed this chart before. Matter of fact, I, I think last time we showed it was at the April bottom. That's what I remember. Yep, and, it was. Um, yeah, this was this is a Zwag breast thrust indicator, you know, ZBT for short. Yes, and it, 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 it only shows up in bull markets. You know, going back at the 2023 bottom or. Or 2022 to uh, 2023 bottom, it showed up three times. It kind of just wow. was all in the same price range, you know, build a base, yep. and the market finally took off. Okay, we just triggered one on August 5th. We hit 0 0.40, and on August 19th yesterday we hit 0.62. Well, uh, in a nutshell, the ZBT needs to hit 0.4 and needs to rally to a 0.6 or higher within 10 days and it matched uh, 10 days uh, I think perfectly on Friday so you know it, it did you know you know it's amazing that yeah, too Friday was I mean this right, is the yeah. sec this is the second one we've got like in six months right yeah yeah I mean that, yeah. that strong that, market yeah this is yeah this is like you, you know you'd be it, it, it may, what it does is measures uh, the up advancing issues compared to total issues. So the total issues percentage wise is really carrying this market. So what that says is we're not in a narrow. We're only a few stocks are carrying the market higher, and those few stocks are carrying uh, the market higher because these few stocks are just going through the moon or go, you know just yes. rocketing. Well, it's not the case here. We got a bunch of stocks carrying the whole market. 
So. Which is really deviant because when you look at the market, like, so what's happening here, folks? Okay, picture this, you know, you got to be here now, not yesterday or tomorrow, right? And what you have is that, yeah, we know that, you know, when the run was going extraordinary, yeah, you had those, you know, NDX stocks that were moving. But this is saying that, listen, guess what? There's a lot of other equities that are under the radar moving also, which is really cool. And what you want to remember here is this is, a, you know, a longer term type of indicator that we're going higher, period. Because it's hard to yeah. comprehend, you know, we've had such a run. It's hard to comprehend, like, are we going to have another run like this? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, okay. You know. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, uh, but, you know, let's, let's take, a, take a quick look. Let's go back chart one real quick. Okay. Yep. I'm and, there. Uh, the only reason why I'm doing this is because I think it's, this Mark is kind of telling a story. Cool. But take a picture in your mind. What the the uh, 2022 square looks like? I see it. it went yes, straight up, yep. straight down, straight up, and it actually went straight down again. Yes. So, all right. So, so I'm thinking that may happen here because ZBT. Sometimes if you look back in 2022. Okay. You know, I gave a ZBT and it went down, came back up, went down, came back up, and so I'm thinking this is probably going to be something similar to that. Now, the reason why... Which is really cool, you, because you had said earlier, you know, not today, but we're talking about you thought we might flip to a consolidation, and that might be the consolidation, because, yeah, right, I can see that. Okay, up and down, yeah, right. Yeah we're, yeah. yeah, we're doing the consolidation right now, so, you know, this thing went, just went straight up eight days in a row. I know, and trust it, me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty rare occurrence for it to happen. Yes. But let's look, kind of see where we are on our short term. Let's flip to chart four. Okay, I'm ready. We got four. All right. Okay. The top window is a 10 day trend. Yeah. And uh, I put in gray actually yesterday or is this today? I, I don't remember. Well, 10 day trend currently is 0.89. Okay. So anything you that 0.9 or lower, a lot of times can at least stall the market. I see. Uh, sometimes you're at highs, sometimes you're, you know, or just flip sideways. But all the, pink areas this chart goes back to uh, 2022 and i showed the times when the 10-day trend hit 0.9 or lower yes and sometimes it comes at tops a lot of times you, you'll see consolidations um sometimes you, you know you, you but anyhow, the last time we had a point nine or lower was exactly at the july top july you know mid-july top yep. and it, that turned out to be exact high and we're, now we're back there again so the market, what that says, is a 10-day trend, that low is just, market's too exuberant. When it's up around 1.2 or higher, right. that's when fear is in the market. Now we got kind of exuberant. So I think the upside is kind of minimal here. And uh, so I, I still think we're probably in the that zigzag thing going on. Bigger trend is up. You know, when the RSI it's four, it gets in the 80 range, that's never the final high, but can lead to consolidations. That happened back in July. And uh, um, the uh, uh, RSI, or the 10-day uh, trend now is back below nine, so you got too much exuberance going on. So I'm thinking, and plus, we're in the fall period here, August, September, October, are usually a danger time it's of tough the market. Sled. You get these wild swings going on. Right. So, so I'm thinking that's, so I'm being careful here. You know, I'm not bullish here, but, but 10 days up, it's like, you know, six days up, the market's higher, I think, 73% of the time. Right. Seven days up, you're up 83%. Uh, yesterday, we're up eight days in a row. Right. I really don't have a statistics of that, but it ain't bearish. Right. Know? No, exactly. Wait, well, you know so, so cool uh, here? Folks, is that Go ahead. you know if we do flip into a consolidation, and the, and the bottom of the consolidation is the high volume low, that just totally makes sense because that would keep the bulls and the bears both scared beyond belief. <laughs> the bears would be flipped out because of this type of you know run to the top side, folks. The bulls would be like, oh no, man, hold it, that's the end of the world if we go down there. But when you look at this on a longer term basis. This is nothing, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this is yeah, this yeah. is nothing. It, you know, the market needs to build up fear it and does. stuff, and I, I'm yeah. thinking we're in the process of doing that. And I wish I did a daily chart because there's a there's a gap open. We filled one gap, but there's a gap open. I think July seventh or eighth, or no, August seventh or eighth. There's a gap open on the SPY around five twenty. 
I bet we see that 520 within the next 30 days or there, you know, maybe six weeks or something. Exactly. So no, that that's, I, I'm with you. Right. Because right. the, bo- the, yeah, top, the top of that, the, the one down the low is, uh, yeah, you get 523 and the low is 517. To fill that gap, yeah, be, yeah, and that you're talking about a high volume low, man. That's a high volume low. Holy cow! I mean, pff. yeah, just, that was a selling climax. Yeah, and, and I thought you know sometimes those selling climax gets tested, sometimes they don't. Yes, I used to uh, back in the old days. Well, if had a high volume blow, always tested. Well, never, never use the word never. Right. So, yeah. And this one is then. So I think we may approach it because we got a gap there at uh, you know five twenty area on the SPYs. And I think I, I think that and the whole thing is just a sideways consolidation, you know. So um, yeah, this is it's just is what it is, you know. But I think it's too you know think about it short here. Is I think you're too quick because uh, you got eight days up. You may push another you know sideways consolidation four or five days and maybe a push higher next week then that could put the high end so we'll have to wait just stay there stay there we got one more segment we'll go through the last couple shots folks tim Moore, tom o'brien we do appreciate your growling problem with us dow's down seven down 82 nasdaq's off 35 s&p's are down seven tim and i are coming right back folks Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials uh, down 66. Nasdaq's up 52. S&Ps are up uh, 10. And, uh, Tim, we have two more charts here. Yeah, uh, 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 chart number five, that's the silver-gold ratio. Okay. And I, I did well, RSI on it. The top nice. window is the GDX. The next window down is the RSI. The window below that is the silver-gold ratio. So I pay attention to that. The RSI uh, did get below 30 at this last low. Um and I marked other times when the RSI was below uh, 30. Uh, a lot of times when the RSI gets below 30, then the RSI will get above 70 on that run. So I'm kind of watching. It didn't happen every time, but it's common. So I, I circled when the RSI got below 30, then I got a red arrow when it got to 70. Okay. And it comes pretty close to highs. You know? Yes. So I'm thinking... Since we got a, a 30 on the RSI ratio, we may this rally may go all the way up to where the RSI hits 70. Uh, so um, something to watch for. Uh, yes, that's kind of a bigger term. I keep an eye on it. But uh, chart number six. Okay, we got a really ni- nice divergence. The second window down from the top is the up down volume for uh, the cumulative up down volume for GDX. And it just, it just blasted up here, hitting higher highs, and GDX is pretty much matching its previous high. So this is a positive version suggesting that at least GDX is, is going to start breaking the previous high. Previous high is up around 39 and change. So if this, if the second window down from the top starts to turn down, uh, it'd be time to worry. But right now it's still going straight up. So this rally still has legs, I'll put it that way. That's a beautiful oh. thing. And listen, folks, don't, yeah. don't forget, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's ord, hyphen, oracle.com. And, of course, you know, this gold contract, man, I mean, it's breaking topside, man. This is, you know, this run looks to yeah. me like it's going to be pretty cool, Tim. The, the, monthlies and we, the monthlies and weeklies are on a buy signal. So I like it. Well, listen, man, you going. have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right, see you then. Love you guys. Love you, man. Bye.